Hey guys, we are fast approaching the golf season, so let's talk about golf and core stability. Uh, it is starting to hopefully get warm here pretty soon. Um, I bet some of you have already probably gone outside and taken a couple of practice swings, and you probably have noticed that maybe you feel a little stiff, a little tight. So we want to make sure that number one, we don't hurt ourselves as we go out there and start playing again, and you know, take our first shot at uh, the the first shot at 18 holes. All right. Um, so a lot of my patients really are thinking. Um, I need to have a really strong core, and if I have a really strong core, that will help me hit the ball farther and I'll be able to play a lot better. Um, the problem is, golf takes a ton of rotation, right? So the whole swing, we're rotating, um, and if you're thinking that, oh, I'm rotating through my core and my lumbar spine, my low back, you have it all wrong. The low back has and is designed for very little rotation. So all that rotation that you need through the golf swing, none of that is coming through your low back. So if you're trying to boost your flexibility and boost your strength in your low back in order to hit the ball farther and to prevent injury, well, you're really kind of hitting the completely wrong spaces or the wrong areas, okay? What you need is you need a very stable low back, not a ton of flexibility or strength. All right, so you actually just want a stable core, meaning very little movement, okay? So I don't care how many sit-ups you can do to have a strong core, all right? What I care about is can you do like a 60-second plank? Can you do 30 to 60-second uh, side planks on each side? You know, are you, do you have great form during like a dead bug and a bird dog? And if you're interested in what, are, what in the world are those exercises, just let me know, you know, we've got a bunch of other videos that kind of show dead bugs, bird dogs, side planks, and planks, okay? So you can still find them out there. Um, but I care a lot more about stability through the lumbar spine and where we need to work on your flexibility and your strength in order to prevent injury and to, you know, have great performance and be able to maybe cut a couple of strokes off, uh, off your game is you need to work on flexibility and strength through your hips and your upper back, all right? So a lot of the rotation is coming through your hips and a lot of your rotation is coming through your, your thoracic spine, which is really kind of maybe a little bit above your belly button uh, through your shoulders, okay? So flexibility and strength through your hips. I mean, obviously, um, you know, stretching the hip flexors, stretching the glutes and the piriformis muscles. Again, we got a couple of really good videos on that one. Look up active Spider-Man stretch, look up our piriformis stretch, which is probably the number one video that, or excuse me, stretch that we teach here in the office, all to increase your flexibility. Um, there's a couple of other really good ones out there as well. Um, but in terms of uh, maybe hip strength, uh, look into doing some good squats. You can either do them air squats if you're just at home or pick up something heavy, even like a milk jug, you know, and do some, do some squats. Or you can think about doing uh, goblet squats, we've got kettlebells here in the office, you know, you, you can find kettlebells at Target and Walmart, you know, just doing some things to develop some hip and uh, quad and knee strength, okay? Um, thoracic spine mobility, okay, and that actually extends into having good mobility in the shoulders. If, you're, if you don't have good mobility in the shoulders and the thoracic spine, um, you're going to have deficiencies showing up in your in your low back. So a lot of times we see patients with low back pain or shoulder pain, and the problem is actually coming from a lack of flexibility or lack of mobility in the mid back. Okay, <clears throat> so grab like a uh, a a a dowel at home if you've got one, or typically we tell people you know, or a broomstick or something like that, and you can actually use these to, to you know develop a lot of flexibility, or at least try and stretch things out. You can do pass-throughs where you're kind of you know going around your head with them, uh, around your body with them. That develops some some flexibility through the shoulders and the mid back. Awesome you know ways to increase that. And then if you're looking at you know increasing strength through your upper back and your shoulders, there's a million ways to do that. You got chest presses, you got your your back. You know make sure you do the front and the back at the same time um, for your shoulders and, and obviously through through your upper back. Uh, lats, anything that you need to do to increase some strength um, through your mid back and through your shoulders. So always remember that if you're trying to increase your, your golf performance by increasing strength in your low back, you are doing it wrong. Um, what you need to do is you need to increase your stability through your core and your low back and then focus on flexibility and strength in your hips 
in your upper back and through your shoulders. All right, so if you have any questions, I hope you're looking forward to getting out there and hitting the courses like I am. Uh, always remember to live with passion, not pain.